Uh, welcome to Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Today is April 13th, 2023. This is the EU and US edition. Uh, today we have uh, myself, Mark Waite, and Alexander Brandeis. Uh, thank you for joining us. Today on the agenda, uh, we have uh, a Jenkins.io topic that Alex will share with us, a few blog posts to highlight that have been published in the last week or two, uh, Google Summer of Code update, uh, some recent blog layout improvements that were uh, submitted by Jan Fajrczyk. Uh, image contributing guidelines that have been added recently, and in addition to that, some new documentation guidelines I've submitted for uh, consideration. A uh, couple pull, uh, one pull request to discuss um, something that we've been working on and could just love to have some community discussion on. Uh, alternative options to handle stale pull requests if um, that becomes a, a, something that we want to talk about. Um, the end of life notifications in Jenkins core. And this is something that uh, Mark's got a concept for that we can discuss and talk through. And the improved CI process for Jenkins.io that Hervé has uh, merged and saved a bunch of space and time for. So we'll talk about that. Uh, reducing the number of open pull requests in general uh, and the early end of life for CentOS 7 in the Jenkins project, provided we have uh, enough time to get to that point. Um, is there anything else that uh, needs to be put on the agenda or any questions? Oh, all right, uh, cool. So uh, Alex, you wanna actually start us off today? Yeah, um, let me go ahead. Actually, I was a bit in a rush earlier. It's not about Jenkins IO, it's about the repository called Jenkins.io. Maybe my comments slipped. So yeah, that's basically what I'm going about. Um, okay. Over the past few months, I proposed over 90 pull requests which have, which have already been merged, and I'm pretty surprised by that, and have also reviewed over 155 pull requests just in the Jenkins that I owe repository. And the contributing file says that the decision of adding more people to the team is up to the documentation officer. And Kevin, that's why I would like to ask you if you are fine with me joining the copy editors team to continue my doing on a more official area. Oh my gosh, absolutely. Sorry. Because my currently my permissions are, I think, inherited from the board group or some sort of that, because I think I don't, I'm not in any moderation group of Jenkins IO at the moment. So, yeah. So Alex, you've already got merge permission though, right? Yeah. That, I okay, think good. All right. So, so Go this is that. so this is not actually giving you any more permissions. No. It's formalizing that the, the your membership in a group. Yes. Good. Okay. All right. Yes. So excellent. Yes. Yeah. And I'm uh, absolutely inclined to just say yes automatically. I don't think there's any doubt or question in my mind, uh, and I don't think Mark has any either. Um, but. Uh, no, that's awesome, uh, Alex. Thank you so much for uh, bringing that up. Asking, uh, obviously, you have more than enough permissions, and you're part of the governance board. So uh, it's yeah, making sure that that's at least formalized and put uh, clearly would be nice, just for visual sake. But um, yeah, no, thank you, and thank you so much for all of your work and uh, contributions, reviews, everything. Um, just since I started last year with Jenkins and the community, I've, you're one of the names that's come up. Uh, Ad infinitum. Uh, so I, yeah, just thank you for everything. So I, I, I object to the use of Latin, particularly when dealing with someone from the German education organizations. <laughs> Alexander probably actually understands ad infinitum. So <laughs> great. Every once in a while, I try, but noted. Cool. Uh, anything else on that, Alex? Or is that uh, is that all? No, you that's basically it. Right okay. Okay. Cool. So Thanks for having. Then, just to bring just to bring the precise detail then what i'm going to do is i'm going to submit a proposal to jenkins developers so i'm sending the mail now alex brandis as a copy editor because that's what the process says if i remember right propose to add alex brandis not my fault as a copy editor in Jenkins.io repository. Already has merge permissions and has already submitted 
you said it was 90 pull requests yes 90 pull requests and has mer and has reviewed over 150 objections if uh, yeah approval question mark okay great sent okay I'll link to the message in the notes so that we've got it. Thanks, Mark. Thank you very much, Mark. Yep, I just got it. Perfect. Awesome. Well, great news to start the meeting off with. Wow, now I'm really excited. Um, so uh, next up, uh, just a few blog so posts that we've recently, oh, sorry, go ahead. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cheat now, Kevin. Okay. Because we've got Alex here, I wanna mm -hmm. shift the agenda. I'd propose we shift the agenda around and bring up sp some specific topics that you and I have talked about, but Alex, I'd like Alex's feedback on. So the yeah. alternate ways to handle stale pull requests and the end of life notifications are two topics, Alex, where I wanted your feedback. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. Let's go ahead with that. Okay. So, so just, all right. So linking. All right. And now because it helps me with notes that they are in the linear order that we will discuss them, I'm actually moving them up. Kevin. Okay. Sounds good, Mark. All right. Good. Okay. So first, first idea, Alex, was we've got a, a long list of pull requests in the Jenkins.io repository. One of them is all the way back from 2019. The content is actually still useful, but none of us have had the time to go in and correct the errors that are in the content. And it's be, it's beginning to become distracting that we've got content there that we just don't have time to work. And there's no way to flag to others that they might take it to work on it. So what, what Kevin and I were discussing was a possible rule where we say, hey, if the content of the stale re pull request is not valuable, just close it, right? Junk pull request, we just close. That's easy. If it is valuable, but needs more work than we're ready to do over the next say a few months, then we create an issue to track that content that mentions the pull request, but we close the pull request so that the pull request pool is the things that are actively being worked, not the things that have just piled up because we haven't had time to do anything with them. Your comments, what do you think? Is that, I know Daniel Beck really dislikes Stalebot and, and I, I agree with his dislike that Stalebot by closing it just because we've not done anything isn't fair, but I'm trying to strike a compromise here to get it off my list. Sorry, Alex, go ahead. Yeah, I'm with Daniel there. I think Sailboard is the least acceptable and most hostile way to close issues on pull requests, given you're basically feeding the user with a copy paste answer and going ahead, hey, this has been inactive for 30, 60, 90 days and so on. We will close it and that's it. But you don't need sailboard for that. You can also do that by hand and it has the basically same bad effect. But yeah, in the meantime, I opened the pull request on Jenkins.io just to get myself into the scope real quick. And I see on the second page there are very a lot of pull requests labeled as work in progress, wiki migration, and unresolved merge conflict. But I wouldn't say that is necessarily a bad thing because in core we if you go to the third page or to the last page, we have that much drafts and pull requests needing attention. Basically, I think you can face a similar problem in many open source projects sized of Jenkins if you go through the larger pay, uh, latest pages of issues and stuff like that. Um, how to address those things? In core, we have a label called stalled, if I remember correctly which Basil introduced, or I don't know, at least Basil used it a lot to mark pull requests where the author is inactive, unresponsive, or didn't address the feedback proposed in a timely manner, like let's say one or two months, and they basically didn't do anything. So we put the label on it, and that label basically means the pull request needs some work, but we allow others to take over like cherry pick the commit into their branch and fix it up, make a new pull request and say, hey, this is a pull request for this. 
and this pull request supersedes the other one. Please review it. Contains the review feedback and so on. Followed on the stay, uh, followed on the start label, we have the proposed for close label, which we don't use that much. But the point of that is to basically really close an issue after waiting a long time. I don't know, not responding to any feedback at all. So, so or, for me, the the star. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, this is what we have in core. I don't know if that is applicable to Jenkins or I/O, given the majority of contributions aren't that much technical, rather than text file or documentation. So you don't need to have tests or something like that to cover that. So it would probably make sense to, I don't know, have a label that says possibly. Or just put the pull request in a draft state and say, hey, I'm working on that. Please don't review that. And I will get back to it at a later point. Or if a review reviewer says, this pull request needs some work, please address this and this and this. Or at least providing a compelling list of feedback the submitter can go off instead of saying, hey, I don't like this. Or hey, this is a bad practice without providing any details. So I, I like the you you indicated one more thing that we could use for state transition which is draft or non-draft so so that's a, a one i hadn't considered so the now the so i think the okay the inactive submitter is the is the most common case for the old pull requests on jenkins.io and and they're I'm confident they're not coming back, right? They submitted it long ago. It's it was submitted as part of Hacktoberfest or as part of some other event, and they're they're they've not been involved in the Jenkins project for a very long time. So with inactive submitter, the stalled label would be an easy one to tell me, oh, I've got an inactive submitter. And then proposed for close could also be used, although I worry there we lose the fact that or it the, by closing it it becomes completely invisible right it, it no longer is visible to anyone that they could include it as content so maybe it's stalled is okay and we just accept that they're going to be open uh, that yeah. that's closer to what jenkins core does right i think that was what you were pointing out is that it's okay that jenkins core has a number of open pull requests many of them that aren't getting progress while we go through this labeling process yeah Okay. I mean, Kevin, oh, go ahead. I mean, we don't need to accept every contribution because not everything fits into our stance of Jenkins or Jenkins.io in that case. So, proposed for close isn't just for stock pull requests, but is a good start, but needs a bit fine tuning here and there. To bring it on stage and say, "Hey, this is good. We can improve and merge this, allowing others to take it to take over in case the submitter is not responding or doesn't want to address the feedback in a timely manner, because there's no real benefit in keeping a pull request open for six months and continuously pinging the submitter asking, "Hey, can you fix this? If they don't want to, we can't force them to do that. So right. Yeah. And I, I actually, I like the stalled label a lot. I did check Jenkins.io that does have the stalled label in the repo, so it can be used. We have, mm. it's in place, which is great. Um, and I, I like all of what you said, Alex, a lot. I think that's a really good way to handle all of these without closing them and, and you know, locking someone out from that. Um, I did have an idea when Mark and I were talking, and this was just based on my experience with Jenkins.io and new contributors. Uh, in that they are typically more likely to go to the issues page than the pull request page if they're just getting started or joining the project. Um, maybe uh, taking some of the older pull requests that are worth it and have value and putting that into a new issue could be a way to get eyes on it while still holding on to that information and data, but also uh, kind of respecting the idea that if someone's not going to work on it, someone else could, or 
something like that along those lines, um, just uh, in an effort to keep it still, you know, alive, obviously. Yeah, that sounds like an interesting approach. We could try it out, like create an issue based on a pull request, go, go the reverse order and say, we have that, someone contributed that, but this is incomplete because it lacks A, B, C, and D. If someone is interested in contributing that, please go ahead, be our guest. We could yeah. see how it works, especially during Hacktoberfest. Oh, oh, right. Maybe that's the time to do it is we say, yeah, good, good idea. Consider that as Hacktoberfest prep. Because to be fair, I would rather see a few Oktoberfest PRs not wrapping around typo fixes here and there, because I'm already approving too many of them. So if someone says, hey, I'm a new contributor to Jenkins, and I would like to pick up the topic based on someone else's work, I think this is something that could possibly work out, especially if you have already a standing point from where you can take over. Right. Okay, good. Yeah, that would be great. And especially where Hacktoberfest is a good entry point for so many people, that's also a great entry point is having some base to work off of like that. So that'd be a great call. Yeah, I like that a lot. No, no, there's, okay, I see a danger in that one in that many of, at least several of those really old pull requests require a level of technical knowledge that a Hacktoberfest first-time contributor won't do. But the simple answer there is we don't label them Hacktoberfest. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Very good, thanks. So that was all that I had to discuss on alternate ways to handle stale pull requests. I think the action item is I'm going to I'm going to, going to apply stalled labels to a number of the ones that I know are stalled first test and and we'll watch and see and then we can consider in future sessions should we assign some of those the Hacktoberfest label. The stalled label is easy, right? It's clear for me. I know which ones are stalled. Great. Okay. So, Kevin, are you okay if we go to the next topic? Absolutely, Mark. All right. So, Alex, this one is one where it's more of a uh, software slash user experience design question than anything. So, we've got a general purpose challenge. CentOS 7 is end of life in June of 2024. Alpine 3.14 is end of life in April. Ubuntu 18 is end of life in end of May, etc. There are these different, different things. Some of our containers need to be end of life. And so we've got a notion that I would love to not just have blog posts as the only way to inform people that something is end of life. I'd like an administrative monitor that says, we've detected that you're end of life on something that's important to the Jenkins project in your environment. The idea is, so, so for instance, we detect inside Jenkins, you're running on CentOS 7 and it will be end of life at this date or Ubuntu 18, it will be end of life May 31, 2023, we're warning you now that the Jenkins project does not support it, Jenkins running on operating systems that the vendor does not support. So the, the concept was we need a way of detecting that we're on that thing. And then we need a way of saying, here's the message we should display before the end of life. And here's the message we should display after the end of life. And the thought I had was this notion of a general purpose admin monitor that is fed by data files in a directory in Jenkins home. Those data files are delivered by the Jenkins install process and, or yeah, maybe they're resources built into the war. I guess they have to be resources built into the war, don't they? But one way or other, they come with Jenkins that say, here are some various end of life things that we need to do where if we find the file on the system etc os release and it has the contents that match ubuntu 18 we know this admin monitor should be displayed now the the question go ahead alex the question to you is what do you think yeah that sounds similar to our approach that we used when we want users about our transition from java 8 to 11 we also use the administrative monitor there 
alongside to other communication channels, of course, but it's definitely an interesting and to me right approach to also display that for sysadmins right into Jenkins itself to say, hey, this OS is going to be end of life then, but the Jenkins project supports it until then. So they can plan ahead and have dates they can actually go off rather than following a blog post that takes place likely a few weeks well before or after end of life so this is not really optimal to plan ahead but yeah like you mentioned we have various os's that are going to be end of life very soon in jenkins and very soon end of life itself and i think an administrative monitor would definitely be beneficial um about the date I mean, if the data, if the data doesn't change, we can just build it into the WAR file, or otherwise we would need to seek a way to keep it up to date. But I don't think that would be a concern, because I, I don't know. Unless Actually, you thought, unless you thought about shifting um, support dates, but if that's not the case, we can just have a static file in the WAR directory for sure. Because if not, we would need to find a way to update that file to the end user. I think you get my concern. I, I do. And it, you you just described something I had not considered. I hadn't thought about the scenario we had with Java, the Java 8 to Java 11 transition, where we actually adjusted the dates. We adjusted the dates after initial publication. And, and so that, that's a good good question. My initial thought is I don't want to have create a service that provides updates to these to these definitions but you may have highlighted we really need to think about such a service at a, at a minimum in the jenkins enhancement proposal that i want to do for this i should explicitly say this is intentionally not using a a service though that could be added in the future to allow us to do incremental updates to this just like we do with the the plugins in the update center today I'm not sure how far the update center supports it, but we, if it supports transmitting, let's say, a bit more external data, we could probably hack it into there. No, okay. Yeah. It, it, then uh, please disregard I, my concern. I, <laughs> I would be, I would be scolded so directly by Daniel. It would be just no. We we're not putting that kind <laughs> of stuff into the update center. Thank you very much. It's already too big. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but in case we need to shift this, we. I need to find a way to update those files because otherwise we will have people yelling at us. Why wasn't I informed? Why did I have the old dates and so on? I don't mm -hmm. think that is the desirable outcome either. So right, yeah. Well, and, and it's it's a it's a valid. Okay, so so some some things that are involved there. Then I had originally envisioned it being multiple files in a directory. But realistically, because it's bundled inside the WAR file, it doesn't have to be multiple files. It could be a single single collection of data because it's specific to the version Jenkins version we ship, right? We at the time we shipped that Jenkins release, we knew these things. The next release, we may know more things. Yeah. yeah. If okay, I remember good. correctly, the dates for the Java 8 end of life thing. We are basically just a message files, so anything works here. Right. Good. Okay. Thank you. Great. That was the feedback I wanted. Thanks very much. Any any other insights that you'd like to offer on that end of life notifications idea before I, I continue with developing it as a Jenkins enhancement proposal? The sooner we get a rid of Ubuntu 18 and send to us even the better. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. I have a separate JEP to accelerate the end of CentOS 7. That's a long, long thing on Mark Waite's passion list. Yes, absolutely. Okay, Kevin, thanks. That topic's done. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, great. Alex. Thank you so much. Great. Uh, okay. In that case, let's uh, keep moving on. Blog posts. So um, we did just pu publish the March newsletter. So all the lovely updates from uh, March from the various SIG leaders are nice and condensed in here. Um, again, always want to thank uh, Roxanne from CDF for the image headers, really lovely and help bring a little bit more personality to it. Uh, another blog post that we recently published is uh, regarding DigitalOcean and there's continued sponsorship of uh, 
Jenkins, they have graciously uh, extended to us an additional $8,400 credit for the next six months. Um, we had some uh, heavy usage in March that was unexpected and uh, relied on due to some other issues we were fixing, uh, but DigitalOcean came through and just showed us that they're here for us and gave us the credit to help get us through the next six months. Uh, and that'll get us to uh, roughly about the year uh, mark for our latest sponsorship with them. So uh, nice time to talk about it and just something that we wanna share our unending thanks for from DigitalOcean, um, truly just amazing and uh, super helpful in making sure we can dedicate our resources accordingly. Uh, the next one is that, uh, so Bruno Verrachtman, who uh, usually is here with us, uh, he's currently at, uh, DevOx France, giving some awesome talks and information out. Um, but uh, he has a second post about building Android apps with Jenkins. Uh, so this was just published last week. Um, if you want more information about uh, the relationship between Jenkins and Android apps, great place to start. And uh, Bruno will be continuing these, this series as we go on. So uh, more to come on that. Uh, and then the last blog post I wanted to highlight today is that uh, we just posted this today. It's about Jenkins at CDCon and GitOpsCon this year. Uh, so uh, CDCon is happening May 8th and 9th. Uh, Mark's actually going to be there taking part in the Graduated Projects keynote panel. So uh, exciting representation there. Um, Alex is going to be there. Alex going to be there too. Oh, sweet. That's right. Thanks nice. to the Linux Foundation. I can make it. Awesome. That's so exciting. And I know uh, Gavin might be there too at some point. So. Uh, just really exciting. Glad to have everyone participating. That's going to be a really good time. Uh, and we'll be announcing the Jenkins Awards winners there as well. Um, so if you're going to be there, you may win something. You never know. But um, just, again, super appreciate this Continuous Delivery Foundation for uh, providing this and sharing this and um, signaling that how much excitement there is for this year. Uh, quick update for Google Summer of Code. So uh, in total, we got about 55 valid proposals, which is uh, far more than we've gotten recently, which is great to hear. Uh, that just means a lot more review work for our mentors and org leaders. So uh, they've been hard at work reviewing and uh, grading every proposal that's come through. They're still working, but um, thank you to all of the folks that are helping with that. Uh, the Recently, we had a uh, pull request submitted by Jan Varchek about improving the blog layout. Uh, this is now live. Uh, we got some really good feedback from the community around this, um, but instead of having it listed down uh, in the page, we've now got these nice little cards and um, blurbs and highlights showing the authors, the publication date, um, just a nicer look overall to the Jake and the blog. Uh, there are some things that we have to, you know, uh, look into and uh, address at some point background color versus the actual background of the page, making these a bit more uniform, things like that. Uh, but ultimately, this is a really great facelift for the Jenkins blog and uh, additionally the Jenkins dashboard or the Jenkins homepage because it's uh, present here as well. So uh, just across the board, nice little updates and quality of life improvements overall. Uh, thanks to Jan for, again, contributing all this and working on this. Um, Really appreciate that as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, da, 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 the image contributing guidelines, uh, I submitted those last week. They have been merged now. Um, so we got I got some good feedback from Alex and other members of the community. Uh, Alex has actually gone out of his way to go ahead and compress 400 images. I'm still working my way through that, um, but I trust. So uh, yeah, it's just a matter of making sure everything looks OK. Um, yeah, that was that was but, that was a mechanical translation, right, Alex? You you wrote a script yeah. that did the work. This was not. Yeah. yeah. Luckily, great. tools exist for that, and you don't have to do that all by hand. <laughs> Fantastic. Great to know. And uh, yeah, it saves about thirty-seven megabytes on the page. Great, amazing. More space we save, the better. Uh, thank you, Alex, for that. Even if it's something that you scripted, that's uh, that's still some. That's a lot of work either way. Uh, and then just today, I submitted some documentation guidelines. This includes some just general practices that I've been working on and developing myself, as well as things that uh, my uh, fellow documentation writers are sharing. 
and I wanted to make sure I included the inclusive naming aspect in the guidelines. Um, that is something that we've been working on for quite some time now. We've had several uh, projects in uh, for that through she code Africa and various other areas. Uh, there's still some places that could exist, but um, we want to make sure that we're not adding more to that and that we're using the updated naming. So uh, things to consider, I know, and uh, thank you to Chris Stern for reviewing and uh, sharing some feedback on that already. Um, I did see he added uh, some information there as well. So I'm going to be reviewing and uh, going forward with that as well. Uh, now we are at time, so uh, if there's anything anyone wanted to discuss further on these last few topics between um, there's one poll request that we could look at um, and a couple other smaller notes, but I want to be respectful of everyone's day. Is there anything that wants to be called out? Nope. Okay. Um, so, uh, in that case, we'll table these three for the next time and continue our discussions at that. Uh, in the meantime, I'll also go ahead and stop the video here. Uh, the recording will be available in about 24 to 48 hours. And as always, thank you for joining. And uh, really great to see everyone. Take care and have a great weekend.